Hello everybody, I'm Sepp Anderson from Mental Images. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about MetaSL because I got lots of questions about this recently with the release of uh, 3ds Max 2011 and the new uh, Mental Mill Standard Edition Public Beta. I showed a little bit of this uh, at the end user event in the Netherlands, but here's a brief version of that presentation. So what is MetaSL? Well, MetaSL is a render-independent shading language. What does that mean? Well, it means you have some kind of shader you've written in the MetaCell shading language. If you have a renderer like Mental Ray, which understands MetaCell directly, well, the renderer simply uses MetaCell and you don't have to think more about it. Uh, this is true for any other MetaCell renderer. It will internally do whatever it wants with it. You just give it the shader, which is a normal text file. It can look something like this and it will simply render. Now, if you have some render that does not support uh, MetaCell directly, uh, the interesting concept with MetaCell is that you have what is known as a language backend. So you have a language backend for a particular shading language used by some other renderer. This language backend converts the MetaCell to whatever other shading language which is used in that renderer. There are already uh, language backends for stuff like HLSL, CGFX, etc. with a lot of people using game engines and similar things. So what if in the future some new magic thing that we didn't think about pops up? Well, the thing is that you can also write additional language backends because these are plugins. So you use something called the Mental Mill Integrators Edition. You can write a uh, language backend for whatever new magic language you have. And then you have the full workflow for this, mag for this language. So what does a simple MetaCell shader look like? Well, if you've done any form of programming uh, in C or C++, you will have kind of the basic syntax clear to you. It's kind of like a little C program or like a little uh, C++ class in a sense. So basically, you have a declaration of type shader. You name it something, in this case my shader, and you have a block enclosed in curly braces, and in here goes the shader code. You have some inputs. Uh, in this case, we have a color input named A and a color input named B. You have some outputs. In this case, we have a color output named result. Uh, name it result is kind of a convention. It's not ne required in any way, but it's kind of a convention we've been using. And then you have uh, the main function of the shader where the actual work is going. So it's a function declared as uh, with the name of main. And it encloses, again, a block with the curly braces. And in here, in here goes the actual code. So you can write some code, for instance, result equals A times B. This is now a shader that simply multiplies two colors, so not terribly interesting. Now, if shaders were only restricted to use inputs and outputs, they couldn't really do anything interesting. So when you are uh, shading an object, there is something called the rendering state, which is basically the context of this shading. Uh, Assume a ray has hit a given point on an object. We have information about this point, and there are things like the surface normal, the position in 3D space, the view direction. We have texture coordinates. We have lights available, etc. These come in as specially named variables, which you don't really have to declare in any particular way. So you simply use them. So you can say that the dot product of the normal and direction. You simply use the dot function. You say normal and direction, and these are pre-filled in values which contain the direction to the the current normal vector, etc. So that's MetaCell. Now, what is Mental Mill? Well, Mental Mill is both uh, a product and a technology. T Mental Mill is the technology behind MetaCell, the compiler that turns it into different languages, etc. But it's also an application in the sense that it's a visual shader authoring and debugging system. It comes basically in three versions. There's the Free Artist Edition, which is a simplified cut-down thing. This is what you had shipping with your 3ds Max 2010, for instance. It came on the DVD, you could install it, and you can have fun with it. The Artist Edition is rather limited in that you can basically only use the existing shaders that ship with it. Uh, and you could, uh, in Max 2010, you could build something in the Artist Edition and get it to work inside Max, but uh, that was kind of clunky and it only worked with the predefined shaders. We also have Mental Mill Standard Edition, uh, which is a full, um, the full version, which has the debugger and stuff that I will be showing you in a minute. Also, there's something called the Integrator's Edition. This is what you would use if you are building a render and want to support uh, MetaCell shading language, or you want to build a backend for your existing render that converts MetaCell 
to some other shading language. Now the interesting part. As of right now, you can go to mentalimages.com and download a free public beta of Mental Mill Special ed uh, Standard Edition. Not Special Edition, but it's kind of a Special Edition. This has the full debugging stuff, which is really nice. Also, MetaSL is now supported in 3DX Max 2011 in a much nicer way than it was before. In the past, in Max 2010, yes, you could do some stuff with MetaSL, but it was rather clunky. You always had to use the DirectX material, which is kind of poorly named. I mean, this isn't DirectX, it's MetaSL. It has that name for legacy purposes. It used to be used to load in DirectX uh, shaders. So you made a phenomena in uh, Mental Mill, you, you saved it uh, as an XMSL file, you can load it in through the DirectX. It's kind of clunky and hard to use uh, and strange. But now we have the Slate Material Editor in Max. And now we can export shaders from the Mental Mill Standard Edition uh, if you have the latest beta. And this will automatically basically appear directly in your Slate Material Editor. A couple of cool things with it is that custom shaders work. You can write your own MetaSL code. And also, uh, you can extend, like I said, the uh, toolbox in the slate material with your own shaders. Now, this can either be done by editing some files which define which nodes are where, etc., etc., which is kind of tricky. Or we can use Mental Mill Standard Edition 1.1 Beta 2 and it will do this automatically for you with basically a single click. Another really cool feature is that ray tracing calls inside the MetaCell code even work in the built-in Quicksilver renderer in 3ds Max, even though the Quicksilver renderer is not a ray tracer. I will show this in a minute. So here is a Mental Mill Standard Edition 1.1 and you all know you can drag in nodes here and start editing uh, shader stuff and connecting together and it's stuff like that all you could also do in the old standard edition so I won't be showing any of that I will instead show the cool feature that you can make your own shaders and here for example I written a shader which creates eyes this is now this, this shader is not really 100% complete and perfect yet but it's kind of an example of what you can do the fun thing with this shader is uh, by the way that the eye ends up on the back side for some reason so you see now we have a feature where this is just a single sphere uh, not uh, any uh, there's no actual geometry here but it's still you can see on the highlight here that there is kind of a simulated rounding of the cornea there is a simulated impression of the iris so you get this reverse highlight on the side here where the eye looks kind of shiny everything is very nicely editable so you can you know drag the iris size you can drag the 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 iris edge width here and you can you know can say you know the pupil eccentricity if you want to make an animal eye uh, make it bigger large uh, pu pupil uh, fuzziness of the edges you can modify colors of the eye and all sorts of things uh, the interesting part now though since this is the full edition of Mental Mill you can go in and debug your shader source so in the past with the standard edition of Mental Mill you could not do the following thing here you see the actual code of the shader and what's really interesting with this is you have lots of powerful debugging tools built in which I really really like so for instance here is a function which does most of the eye shading in here for instance there is something called the reflection normal so if I click on some line over here uh, for instance there I select that line and I go find the reflection normal it's uh, over there I can open this up and if I turn it around here we see uh, since it was on the back side as I said before you can see this simulated normal vector that is used for reflections and highlights here it's much clearer to see it here when it's displayed as a normal map and there's even features here where I can debug this so I can tell it to be a camera space and I can now drag this across here and see the little arrow changing direction so I kind of understand how this uh, bump